Well, hello, everybody. My name is Sarah, and this is Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Clean Intermittent Fasting and then my OMAD. Some of you practice different things, and I'm still glad that you're here. If you're an older person, especially a female, you are a veteran of all of the diets, all of the ways, all of the wishes. And for me, this is the only thing that continues to work for me clean intermittent fasting, and OMAD. So I talk about what works for me, and I hope that maybe you've tried it and you see that giving your body that whole 22 hours, 22 to 23 hours of not putting any food or any food-like substance in your mouth, like gum or flavored coffee or Tic Tacs or any of those sort of flavored soda waters, those sort of things, just making it very clean with water and black coffee. By doing that, you have allowed your body to really rest and digest everything. And sometimes it even gets to autophagy, which is, if you don't know what it is, Google it, because I'm not a doctor or a specialist, but I just know that people talk about it. All I know is that my thighs have not had the experience of autophagy, just saying. So, If you're one of those that says, I can't eat when it's hot, you're probably in the wrong place because my appetite is 24-7, 365, 24, and I always am up for a good meal when it comes time for the OMAD, (laughs) truth be told. So today is my day off, so I've just polished my silver and I'm getting ready to tackle the day. Well, what does that mean? Well, if you're me and you work in a grocery store, it means that on your days off, you go to places like BJ's, Whole Foods, and Trader Joe's for all the things that your own store doesn't sell that have become part of your part of your family when it comes to eating. And part of my family is how I create my salads every day. And I, they're always different by the time the day is done, but pretty much the same ingredients are the big tub of O Organics baby spinach, the big tub of O Organics spring mix, and then I go to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods for my organic coleslaw that has some carrots, sometimes some red cabbage in it, as well as the green cabbage. Love that in my salad as well. Sometimes I make a lighter salad, which is pretty much just the spring mix and and, um, baby spinach, but on a day like today, I'm having the denser things, which means more of the coleslaw, the grated carrots, the hunks of red cabbage that I love in my salad. So I do all of those things, and then I add craisins, I add um, whole foods, organic, roasted and salted sunflower kernels. I also add pumpkin seeds, organic roasted pumpkin seeds, or maybe they're just raw. I'm not sure. I add those as well. So nuts and seeds and craisins go in as well. I'm still stuck in my extra virgin olive oil. That's all I like on my salad. Um, Right now I'm going through some, uh, uh, you know, the little plastic container of the crumbled feta cheese. So I like feta cheese. I like crumbled blue cheese. I put those things in my salad as well. And I'm addicted to shorts that show cooking. And one of the things that has my attention, especially like on a day off when I could do some cooking, even if it's like 9 million degrees and 100% humidity, is roasted cauliflower. This woman showed where she, uh, you know, sliced the cauliflower. So it really, not, it looks like slices of the brain when I was in when I was in high school in biology. But anyway, the walnut. Um, And so then she brushes it with oil and lots of different spices as well as fresh grated Parmesan and then roasts it in the oven. It looks so good. And then she dips it in a sauce. I would just put it on my plate like it's a piece of swordfish and knife and fork it. Looks good. I do love my vegetables. And I find the vegetables... Hearty vegetables during um, this type of weather, my stomach digests them pretty pretty well. I have some leftover pizza 
from when my kids were here. They came a couple of days ago. And so I'll probably have two slices of the pizza and the medium-sized dense version of my salad. And then I'm happy. Yesterday, I had leftover ribeye and some roasted Brussels sprouts, which I could eat every single day for the rest of my life. I don't know if I was ever, I remember I used to like to buy the frozen Brussels sprouts. I remember buying them and then cooking them and having butter on them. And I'd have two boxes of them. At that point, they came in those boxes like chopped spinach still does and adding the butter to it. I do love my Brussels, um, probably because they're like a baby cabbage, right? I guess cabbage is my favorite family of, of veggies. And so I will go to Trader Joe's and reload on lettuces there and then I'll also go to Whole Foods because they're the one that ones that sell the full fat good culture cottage cheese and if you've ever had it you know that there's no other cottage cheese unless you go to a, a farm stand where they make their own up in Vermont I won't be doing that today you know I just I won't I'll I'll be here on Cape Cod so I continue to do the same old same old I had the um, I had to buy lactose-free 4% good culture because there was no regular one or the 6% one, which is beyond divine. And I added a little good culture pineapple cottage cheese, which comes in little five ounce tubs. And so I had that, the two cottage cheeses, and then I put Trader Joe's slivered almonds on it. And that was my dessert. It was so good. Oh, I also had um, half of a white peach and probably a third of a Bartlett pear. It was perfect with the slivered almonds. And yeah, that's my version of a yummy, um, my kind of lifestyle diet uh, dessert. So I had that and, and then my salad as well. So I just continue to be a foodie and love things. And when I have my day off, I do the busman's holiday. That's what they used to call it. When a, when a bus driver would go on a holiday, he'd take the bus. So that's why they, oh, maybe you were there. If you're older like me, you've heard the term before. So that's what I do. I make the rounds of the other three stores and load up on things. I'm getting low on my extra virgin olive oil. And sometimes I go to places like TJ Maxx, Marshalls, and Home Goods, where they have extra virgin olive oil, and the date is still good, um, reduced. And so I buy those little, that's what I'm working on now, and I'll come to the end of that. Sometimes I have a vinegar, uh, but I haven't for months. I've just been stuck on the extra virgin olive oil. So I love watching other videos of other people and what they do and how they do it. I love the shorts on YouTube and Facebook where people make these beautiful sort of meals that I like. They do things with vegetables that I really haven't done, like this, that broiled cauliflower. Oh my God, it just looks so good. So I like to do things like that. And um, when, I, when I used to make pizza, I made the keto key- keto dough pizza. This pizza is regular store pizza. So it is regular white flour. It doesn't trigger me into having um, a binge of any sort. I guess I worked through that many years ago and got to the point where you're not denying yourself anything girly. So you can have just the two pieces of pizza because there will be another pizza in your life. So those things seem to work for me. I feel totally blessed because my food addiction and my uh, just compulsive overeating, I wouldn't say binging, it's just eating too much of a good thing a lot was part part of my problem and my issue. Now with that timed sort of eating by having my OMAD, I have everything that I want in the meal and it's planned in advance like today with the salad, with the pizza, with the cottage cheese, with the little fixings on top, the fruits. And it just, it's satiating, it's satisfying, it's filling, not overstuffing. I, it just feels kind of clean to have the overload of the vegetables with some minimal 
protein, which today will be the cottage cheese and the cheese that's on the pizza. It all just seems to work for me. It makes me very, very happy. And I don't use a scale anymore. I remember those days of hopping on. I still read people's posts when they go, you know, there or, or, or uh, people that I work with that hop on the scale and they've lost, you know, this today and not tomorrow. Anybody that weighs themselves in a frantic way when it is this humid is crazy because you're going to make yourself, you're going to make that brain kick in all that crazy stuff because when it's humid out, I'm sure, I know that the first couple of days when it's not humid anymore, I pee like I was pregnant. <laughs> not to be too, too TMI, but yeah, you know, why do that? Your body, they tell, they tell you hydrate, hydrate, hydrate when it's hot and humid. And so you do. And so you just, you feel yourself just being this like balloon that they just keep adding another cup of water, another cup of water, another cup of water. And then as soon as the humidity is, is halved, you know, there it goes. So don't, don't make yourself crazy with the scale weighing yourself in this humidity. You don't, you don't need to be crazed. And if you're older, come on, you know better, right? You don't want to do that. Isn't it nice to know that if your jeans fit, you're doing okay? I have two pair of jeans and one is one size and one is the other. One is from Banana Republic. The other one's from Old Navy. And when those two pair of jeans fit, I'm a happy camper. And I will be wearing one of those pair of jeans, and I even put them in the dryer on high. <laughs> remember when you, well, remember when I used to, like, not really dry them in the dryer because I was afraid of shrinkage and there wasn't much hope for me to fit in them if they did? Yeah. Silly little things that we did along the way. So I'm glad to be kind of freed of those things. I'm glad to plan my menu that that allows for... I don't know if I'd call pizza standard American diet. What I think of the standard American diet is like Diet Cokes and Doritos and, you know, onion dip and, you know, all, buffalo dip, all those things that I put in the cart for other people when I shop. <laughs> they must suffer so much in the hot weather because those things just, how can they, <laughs> I just, you know, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad I'm here and I'm glad I've evolved into loving fruits and vegetables. And, you know, when I take my bus tour into other people's produce sections, it's always fun to see what they have. And I don't need to overbuy because produce doesn't last long in this weather. So that's what I do. You know, it may be boring to people, but I love my life. So today I know that I'll be buying a green cabbage. I've got a head of cauliflower brand new. I could slice that up. There's things that I could do and then make the things go. I've got my eggplant um, glop. And so what I did was I sliced an eggplant in threes. And so two have a bottom kind of thing. And I roasted everything. And the center part I cut up with a hot Italian sausage made in Boston. It's called Boston Guys, I think. And... Uh, Lots of oregano, fennel seed, basil, um, zucchini, cauliflower, all kind of sauteed, grilled together and put on the two bottoms of the eggplants. So I've got a couple of meals with that after the pizza for other days. And then, you know, who knows, another steak might fall into my life. So I keep it same. I keep it simple. I have a very small... Uh, list of favorites that I have now. I'll get into the soup and stew arena in a couple of weeks. Uh, I want to get a, I want to get an air fryer and I want to get a smaller crock pot just to make little batches that will serve me two or three or four meals. I don't want to get into freezing the stuff like I used to. I'm trying to make my freezer less than and um, kind of, you know, just make enough in a batch of something if it's a stew or some sort of stir fry gloppy thing that it lasts a couple of days and then it's gone. I don't like saving it anymore like that. Um, but I do freeze steaks that I buy in the backpacks, the grass fed. So that's what's up with me. I'm going to have a good day. I hope you have a good day. I just went outside to pick a, 
a few fresh flowers for my dining room table. And oh my God, it is like, it's like going to a steam bath where all those older portly men are with their white towels <laughs> and talking with the mafia, right? Didn't the, Don't a lot of those movies show that where they go and they talk because they know they're not being recorded in there. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you get a lot out of whatever food program you're on. If you're working towards something like going from flavored coffee or loaded coffee or cream in your coffee or Truvia or Stevia or any of those other packets that are artificial and not good for you, I hope your progress is noteworthy and I hope you put it down below because I think it's a big deal to get to Just Black, please. Took me a long, long time. And if you're happy with your results, having your coffee the way that you like it still, enjoy that too. This is about finding your bliss point and your happy place with food, with your head and your gut and your pants, your jeans, your skinny jeans. I will see you here the next time. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Clean, meaning just black coffee and just plain water, um, fasting, and then the feast that I have every day at one. I'll see you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.